Starting out as an actor in my hometown of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I was able to tackle some great roles. Uh, my portrayal of Captain Hook in the children's theater's Peter Pan was challenging. <laughs> and I went deep with my performance of the Wicked Witch and Wizard of Oz. At 18, I got the opportunity to be an apprentice in a summer stock company, and I jumped on it. It was 1965, and I boarded a Greyhound bus tolerating the two and a half day trip, just thinking about the rich theater experience I would have in Danville, Kentucky. <laughs> I'd never heard of it either. I, I didn't care. I, it was real theater with real New York actors. As an apprentice, we lived in small cabins and got free food. You'll be doing the props, honey, the director said to me, and paint the sets, clean the theater, scrub the bathrooms, lawn work. I was living the dream. <laughs> um, this theater prided itself on doing world premiere original plays. This season, they did The Ghost Drinks Bourbon. <laughs> what? Uh, you never heard of this one? Well, see, there's a reason. <laughs> it was bad. I mean, really bad. Okay, an actor um, pours the ghost a bourbon in a trick prop glass on the mantel. And on the back of this glass, there was a hole where the bourbon drains out behind the fireplace. This is how the audience knows the ghost is drinking bourbon. <laughs> so I um, accidentally placed the trick glass on the tray with the regular glasses. Well, giving a dramatic speech, one of the actors, Curtis, pours his drink into the trick glass. He holds the glass near his waist. The bourbon starts streaming out in an arc and it looks like he is peeing. The audience screams with laughter. Afterwards, Curtis storms up to me yelling, you stupid bitch. You are an inadequate, unprofessional moron. You don't belong in the theater and you should leave. Oh God, I was just sick with remorse. Another actor, uh, Bill Wiley, stepped in Curtis's face. You do not talk to a girl like this. You are out of line. How dare you decide that she has to leave? Who are you to tell her? I was in love. Oh. I'd noticed Bill all summer. His great sense of humor, his good looks, and his southern accent was very sexy. Well, for the first time since my father died when I was 12, I had someone in my corner. I was 18, and he was 36. <laughs> From that moment, Bill and I find reasons to be in the same place. We laugh at each other's jokes. Our chemistry was just bubbling and exploding. Everyone should have a summer like this where your feelings actually have you riding on sheer exhilaration. <laughs> Uh, the season ended and following Bill to New York was definitely in my near future. We couldn't wait to see each other between our dumb survival jobs. I was a hostess in a diner and he was a night guard out at the World's Fair. Being together was all we needed. We loved sitting on a bench over at the boat basin in Riverside Park or jump on a subway down to the village, maybe get a slice with pepperoni. One day Bill said, you want to get married? And I said, of course. <laughs> I, was, I was 19 and he was 37. The age difference just didn't matter to us. Relatives shook their heads. My sister Margie wrote to me, there's a reason people don't marry someone 19 years older. Be careful, Mary. Think about it. 
And I did. On May 5th, 1966, we were married. This year, we will be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> so uh, we moved into a small apartment on the west side, and our rent was $96 a month. <laughs> we were unemployed actors in a two-room apartment, but we wanted children, so we brought two babies, both boys, in to join us. Thank God for New York City parks. <laughs> Boys have to be run like horses and dogs. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't great, but we made it work. Bill made bunk beds with the top one resembling a loft, and we had a pull-out couch in the front room. At one point, Bill thought he should get a real job, you know, to support the family, and I said, no, you're an actor. We're actors. We're following our dreams. Well, with the boys, we were a team. When my career started to take off, uh, he never minded being Mr. Mom. Oh God, I felt so fortunate. One time when Bill's mother came to visit, Bill wanted to appear as if he was a, you know, a working actor, saw an audition in backstage and you know, he went to the call. He was hired. Bill originated the role of Father Dewis in Sam Shepard's Buried Child, and the play won the Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. Bill's in his late 80s now. The age gap seems wider, but he still has a great sense of humor, still handsome, probably the sweetest, best-natured old guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. Several years ago, he had a very bad fall where he shattered his femur. After surgery, one leg is shorter than the other. Since then, he's needed Vicodin every day for the pain. And with the meds and needing a walker, the acting work dwindled, and life as we knew it was over. We still manage to get out, though. Hey, and we love theater. We see theater. And we have something called a snooze scale. A, a one means he fell asleep in the first scene. <laughs> means he stayed awake the whole time. Okay, Bill, thank God, never snores, but there is a sound sometimes from his hearing aids. It sounds like this. <laughs> One night, we entered a theater, and beautiful chamber music is coming from behind a scrim on stage. And as I'm starting to take Bill's walker up the aisle, a group is coming down. So I politely move it up and away against the wall so they can pass. The walker hits a protruding fire alarm and the loudest, most obnoxious sound screams out. <laughs> The audience puts their hands over their ears with pained faces. The musicians keep playing obediently, but all you could hear is ah! <laughs> Stage manager flies down the aisle and yells, what happened? I'm so embarrassed that I revert back to third grade and say, I guess someone in that large <laughs> We hear fire engines, firemen storm the place. It, it turns out there's a short in this wall alarm and they get it turned off. The audience comes back and sits down and Bill asks, do they know how that thing went off? <laughs> I say under my breath, oh God, it was me. I hit it by accident, I did it. He laughed, <laughs> a good laugh. The show was beautiful, all was forgotten, and on the snooze scale, it was a five. <laughs> yeah, I miss my walking partner, my traveling partner, my clean up the house partner. I do all the driving, the food shopping, the cooking, running on errands. Yeah, I get tired of it, and it's hard. But what's really hard is when he says, you should have someone younger. That breaks my heart. I wouldn't trade anything for the fun, full, challenging life we've had. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs>